Hi everyone, the Mature Simmer here. So welcome back to Real Economy Trucking. This is the series that I'm doing here in Euro Truck Simulator 2 and I'm using a Real Economy mod which makes jobs significantly less lucrative than they are in the base game. So you can see here I'm making basically one euro per kilometer which is significantly lower than you normally would. Uh, this is episode 40 in the series, so if you're new, welcome. Glad to have you here. If you're returning, uh, appreciate those who continue to come back and follow along and see how I'm doing here. So I had a few choices. I've decided I'm going to take this job here, which is a little bit longer, but I think should be within the realm of what is pretty good for an episode. So we're going to go, as you can see, 537 kilometers. The other option would have been going down here to Bologna, but that takes me down this way. I just figured if I get over here, you can see I've got a lot more options available to me. So let's get going. All right, so we're here at the position of our last delivery. Hopefully I can make this turn, but these European trucks have a really tight turning radius, which is great. But I need to basically go around the corner. You can see care for there over to my right. That is where I am headed to get this load. Turn right. All right. So we're going to be heading out of Italy and into uh, Slovenia, I believe. Keep right. And then turn right. We'll have to see because right now I have two and a half hours till turn I should right. rest. So obviously I'm going to want to do that soon. Turn right. And here we are. You have arrived at your destination. Your route guidance is now finished. All right, I'm assuming oh, there's two trailers there. But we want the use packaging. Now they're both actually going to Marabor, but so that will work. Ready to roll. But yeah, this might have been one where I would have looked at it and said, hey, I can make a little bit more per mile with the other one, but I don't know that oops. Haven't made that mistake in a while. I ended up hitting the space bar, which is the direction change key or you know where I go from reverse to forward forward to reverse in farming simulator I do a lot of that so it's kind of second nature hey I want to go the other direction hit space but here in the truck simulators that just turns on my parking brake all right so we are on our way a little piece of grass growing up there between the cracks in the pavement, I guess, but hey, that happens. This is not giving me any indication of which way to go. Turn right. All right, there we go. It's always a little bit of a game with the GPS of getting far enough that it realizes, hey, I'm on the road and I need some direction. Get ready to turn left. All right, so I have 23 hours. Turn I'm gonna, down. I'm gonna drive a bit if I can, because it's only 1 p.m. But I'm hoping once we're on the Autostrada that there Get will be more left. places to rest. Turn left. Ah, police car. I would think that was a police car. Honestly, don't know that I've seen a lot of those here. So let me reset my trip meter. You can see we're just over 10,000 kilometers on this truck. So still, by truck standards, absolutely brand new. Just really getting going. But, you know, it's a big milestone when you're, you've got a vehicle, when you hit that 10,000 mile mark and you know, then probably 25 and 50 and 100 and on and on from there. 
but I have 535 kilometers from here it's telling me so that will give you a bit of an understanding of where we're at should be able to go here with the automatic read there we go No, I'm gonna, to right. I was going to say, I'm going to assume I'm going right, because turn right. going back the other way, I know, takes me to where I came from. Within the last episode, where I was just moving slightly across Italy. But what I'm trying to do over time is just, you know, explore the map, enjoy driving around. I have not done... A, as much Euro Truck Simulator as I have American Truck Simulator. So this is certainly a lot newer to me. I've, I've got several hundred hours in ETS 2, but I'm approaching a thousand hours in ATS. So now those dwarf in comparison to the amount of time I spent in Farming Simulator, because that's my main sim that I spend the majority of my time in. But definitely enjoy these when I get the opportunity. So it looks like we've got some wonderful fields of grain off to the right. I just noticed that, but I was starting to talk about the, tun the tunnel here. Harvester out in the field, parked in the middle. That could be a problem. They gotta start moving. I don't know if they left it there when the field was planted and forgotten and everything grew up around it, but you don't want to move that too much or you'll destroy some crop getting it to the edge of the field. Looks like we've got some fans in the tunnel here to probably keep the air from stagnating and move things along. Alright, so there is a rest stop there. Whew hour and a half. I'm going to take a chance and go one more. It's too late now. I was debating looking at the map, but I'm trusting the Italians to do the right thing and give me places to stop. Especially like right before I get to the border. Ah, looks like some horses over there interesting how the barrier has windows so that we can see through they can see us I'm not quite sure who wanted the windows more the folks that were driving so that they could see things or the folks that live there so they could watch the traffic go by I suppose if you got to listen to it anyway you might as well get the enjoyment of seeing it right um, all right is it gonna is he going to let me in? I think I'm clear. I'm going to slowly move over. Oh, I didn't think. I thought I had to because I thought it was turning me right. And actually, maybe this one is. I don't know. At this point, I'm in this lane, so we're going to go this way. But yeah, going back to the noise and seeing the cars, I myself live near an interstate in the U.S., and so I certainly could understand perhaps the appeal of that. Now, I don't live by the wall where I could see it. I'm a little ways away, but I still hear the noise. But just the concept, certainly. Uh, makes sense to me. All right. So I think all of these lanes would... Yeah, I hope it's open. No, is it not open? Oh, goodness. Oh, boy. All right. I should have known better. That one has a coin spinning... This one does not. Alright. Because then I saw, like, I'm like, I think there's a red line. Oh, that says card up there. Obviously, I misread things. Silly me. Alright, 18 euros. And this is always the challenge. You know, we're only getting 595 euros for this trip. And, you know, 18 is 2 or 3 percent. I'm sure this will not be the last toll we have. 
So it's always fun when you're in the real economy mode, but this is the reality of what truckers have to deal with. Yeah, see, so this arrow, like it says Venezia, I, I kind of felt that this was a mandatory turn lane, so. But obviously that's incorrect. In Italy here, they're just pointing you in that direction and letting you go there. See, now we're down to 34 minutes. Now my decision to continue is not looking so bright. Because Euro Truck Simulator is usually not as forgiving as Ooh. ATS with any kind of a grace period. I'm just not sure if that truck's going to move over. I think he will. Yep, here he, well, he did now because I was over, but no, yeah, the lane is ending, so. Good move on my part there to stay out of his way. Now, it's telling me in real time I have about 18 minutes left, so this may be, you know, if that stays true, 25-minute, 30-minute run. So absolutely within the realm of 30 to 60 minutes that I try to keep these episodes. That seems to be the ones that get more views. Seems to be what make people happy, certainly. Any comments are appreciated so that I understand what that sweet spot is and what you'd prefer to see. Because sometimes I've also strung two shorter runs together, maybe two 20-minute loads, and, and made it a 40-minute episode. It's just hard to know what people are looking for and when they sit down and, and want to enjoy an ETS-2 video, what is the spot that they'll sit and watch. Of course, if it's like most videos on YouTube, and frankly, mine certainly are, uh, people watch the first two or three minutes Ooh. and then leave, so it's, it's nice if, you know, if you're still sticking around, thank you. I appreciate those loyal folks who just come here for the content and for the general chattering that I'm doing as I'm driving to at least say something to you. But the beautiful Italian countryside looks like we're definitely in an area where there's more farming involved. We've got a lot of fields around. These look like they were harvested as opposed to the others that we were passing. Now that, oh no, that's just stubble around the edge. I was like, Oh no, there's crop in the center still left, so they've started to harvest that field. Alright, now I'm at zero. I've hit a second toll, and they haven't given me a rest stop. They are not being kind. Alright, so this should be good. I see a green up there. Although I'm still, even though it says card, I'm going to have to stop and and pay here. So, or actually, okay, this just creates that marker again of, of where you're being measured from, I suppose. And then we'll pay at the other end. Dot PL, so I'm assuming that that no. truck is a Polish company. I think that's what dot PL is for an internet address. So my ancestry, my parents are actually from Poland. They came here to the U.S. So I'm first generation here, so there's a little bit of a tie to Europe for me in that regard as well, which also makes it interesting. But I also, the little bit I've spent there in Germany and working, uh, certainly enjoyed it and enjoy the differences that we have from the U.S. and so forth. So another fun thing with driving around here just exposes me to something completely different okay Friuli Ven Venezia Giulia I don't know don't know if I'm saying that entirely correctly I hope so I'm also trying to learn some Italian not because I'm driving through Italy in ETS 2 but just because all right going to pull over here, hopefully before we get penalized. Yeah, we're getting that. Okay, let's find a new route. Closing in uh, symbol on us that means we're getting tired, our eyes are starting to close. There we go. All right. Now we can close them, so let's do that. 
All right. So, good news is Robert made 1,100 euros. Robert has also leveled up. The bad news is, the way this works, I tend to drive in the dark a lot on this series, because unfortunately I have to kind of make it. I've got 10 hours, 38 minutes now, because there's also a lot of a long rest period of about 10 or so hours, I think, in, in Europe that you're required to take. All right, looks like that truck is going to let me in. That fencing is interesting. It's almost like something you'd see out west in the U.S. And of course, everybody here in the U.S., you, know, you might have to go way back now, a hundred or more years, but everybody came from somewhere, and usually they came from Europe, so it's possible that fencing right. just and then exit right. was something folks had been doing. All right. Exit right. So there is Trieste. Speaking of Trieste, this was an area that SCS just posted a uh, an announcement on in their West Balkans expansion. So this area that we're driving through now, I guess, is going to be an area that is going to be graced with an official DLC at some point in the near future, I would imagine. If you're not familiar, West Balkans was the one SCS announced when they shelved the Russia expansion uh, after Russia invaded Ukraine. So we're not getting the Russia Keep expansion right. and then exit right. until whenever. You know, we don't know what that might be. Exit and in the meantime, right. they've devoted their energy to another area, and I guess this is it, or we're getting close to where it is. Trieste was one of those cities. So I didn't know where it was. I was just thinking as I was loading in and looking at that announcement come up. I'm like, not sure what country that's in. Just so I can understand what the West Balkans are, I might want to take a look at this. And But now I know. So, all right. So now the cards are out this way, which is the blue. Okay, wait a minute. Why, why are all the, okay, there's one lane that I can go to for the card. This is, I'm normally not this ridiculous with my tolls, so I'm just trying to move along and I'm honestly wasting more time than if I had just pulled into the lane and hit the button, but I, I would think with a card I could just pass through, but it doesn't seem to matter. All right, 37 euros, so now we're up to, what, 55 euros? So yeah, we're getting up to nearly 10% of our income is now spent on tolls. Not quite yet, but I have another 4.5 euros to go for that, but I would imagine that we're going to hit that. Because if there's anything I've learned in playing ETS 2 for a few hundred hours, Europe loves its tolls. And I'm sure it's a direct way to pay for the infrastructure with those that use it, as opposed to just a general tax, which tends to be what the U.S. tries to do, and frankly does quite poorly, which is why the uh, infrastructure bill that finally passed here was a big deal because we've had some really aging infrastructure, mainly bridges and tunnels and things. I don't know how much of that is going to just roads, but um, some, you know, maybe the Europeans have the right idea, even though it is kind of annoying to have to keep slowing down and stopping every few kilometers. It might be the fairest way and maybe the best way to keep things working. You know, it's hard to judge, obviously. We're here in a sim. There aren't potholes. There aren't roads that fall apart over time. Although that would be interesting, but I don't know how valuable. Um, you know, that 
the game would have some sort of time model, but the game doesn't really have any kind of a time model. I mean, it walks you through days of the week and so forth, but it pretty much stays the same time of year without any kind of mods. So that would be a, a, diff, a very big change for the game and the game engine if it time progressed and after winter some of the roads would deteriorate and start to fracture and so forth. But Because even with this, the road texture, I'm pretty sure in this series, I know in ATS I'm running a road texture mod as well to make the roads appear a little bit more realistic, but they don't give you any potholes or anything that you run through, because even if they were just painted on, you would just smoothly run over them. Like, they actually need to be in the engine, although there was, like, a patch there. So they do at least model that, but it's still nice and smooth. But what I was getting at is, like, we know that the U.S. has some challenges with it because we deal with all the potholes. All right, I'm not going that fast. Well, I actually am going 85. I don't know how. Uh, I better slow down before I tip myself like I almost did on the last run when I jumped out of an exit. I was like, yeah, I'm not going 70. I'm okay, and this is just an entrance, but that didn't work. So yeah, it's always hard to get used to reading the signs with the furthest thing at the top and then the closest thing at the bottom. Because in the U.S. it's it's backwards. And I've seen in areas in ETS too that it's not that way. So I think certain countries in Europe do it the way the U.S. does, but most seem to do it the other way. But I'm always looking for where I'm going at the top because that's what I'm used to, and then by the time I realize it's the other way, like it is here, because I'm going to Maribor, I don't see that on the sign at all. So, but my sim dashboard tells me I have 191 kilometers to go, eight minutes, and two and a half hours of game time. Have a safe journey. I'm imagining it wouldn't be in English here in Slovenia, but again, maybe the modelers, because this, sh this would be a pro mods map at this point. Uh, yeah, maybe they didn't do that. Do not drink while driving. A good message. All right. Lublanya. I have heard of that. So, I'm trying to figure out if he's maybe had to do a job site there. He's got looks like maybe a couple pipes or something in the back, and then a pallet of something. It's hard to tell. Oh, there's a car next to him. Rasep. Okay, there's Lublanya. Keep right. And I guess we're headed in that direction. There's Maribor. First time I've seen it on a sign. I may have missed it earlier. If I did, I apologize. Does this go into two different directions? I guess it does. Because that, I assume, I see, is just an immediate exit, but I don't think one we can take. We can't. The ETS-2 arrow barrier is there. All right, I will move over here. I should still be able to stay in this lane, even though it said keep left. So, I'm assuming Maribor is the second closest. But we'll see. I'm not sure. I'm guessing we're not going to get any kind of a discovery here, which is a little disappointing, but it is what it is. sun is starting to come up, so at least we're going to get to our destination with a little bit of daylight, or well, probably a lot of daylight. We still have almost two hours to go. 
but this was probably the other dot we were passing through just before we got to our location. All right, we're gonna keep left. Gradek, Gras, and Maribor. Seja, Seja, I don't know. No, I'm Polish, I, I don't speak Slavic clearly. I do know enough Polish. Um, so, I almost felt like I took that too quickly, but I didn't think I was going that fast. All right, 116 kilometers to Maribor. My SIM dashboard is telling me 105, so we may not quite get there, which also creates a bit of a problem for finding the next job. Now, see, that's a Srecho Pot. I'm assuming that is Slovakian. So, a little bit of terrain here, mountains, looks like a retaining wall with some rocks for good measure. Another tunnel. I don't see the fans in this one, just some lights. It looks like we can go a little quicker if I can here. I can only go 290, two tunnels very quickly, so while not huge mountains, um, enough that obviously to run the road effectively they had to drill through some of the terrain. All right, please drive carefully. Yeah, not time to exit yet, and again not one we can exit on, which you can see on the GPS overlay down there. Just little stubs coming in. 51 miles to Maribor. Of course, now I say 63, so maybe we will, in fact, get there. Now, that is a feature that I have seen on U.S. road signs as well, where suddenly you're like, oh, I have this far, and then the next sign, like the distance of the city, has changed, like it's floated a little bit. Um, so always interesting how that happens and how they measure things. So this is a bridge between two hills it looks like. Because once again two very quick tunnels one after the other. And now suddenly we're we go from very hilly to flat. Look at that. It's almost like transitioning to another world or walking through a tunnel in a theme park and going from the mountain area to something totally different. That was probably one of the most abrupt changes I've seen. All right, Maribor Center is the next one. So a lot of big interchanges. There is our delivery point. So yeah, the interchanges here in Europe, I, I've always been fascinated by just how they're... I don't know that there's standards. I mean, there are to some degree, but they're just all so semi-unique right in how they fit and in. Right. And some of it, you know, is certainly fitting in with the terrain and so forth. But, exit. uh... Right. Well, let's see, because I don't see the name Marabor on the my overlay, my GPS, but it does say Maribor Center. Keep left and then turn left. So one would think that that would be enough to get me to discover it. Turn but left. I guess we'll find out, won't we? So I like the red light with the arrow. That makes it a lot more obvious what it's for when you're coming up on it. So those differences are certainly something I appreciate and enjoy seeing, is just how things look different between what I'm used to on U.S. roads and how things are done, and, and then also just seeing the variation across the different countries in Europe and how they choose to implement certain things.
right. Keep left and then turn left. Well, now we've got a city sign. I'm hoping that really will make sure that... There we go. All right. Turn left. I'm just really getting worried. I'm like, I'm getting close here. It almost seems like I should go to the next spot, but... Oh, no. I'm looking at the question mark. I don't know why. <laughs> you know what? And now I can't see the light, so I better change my view. There's McDonald's. Looks like a Mercedes dealer, if I'm keeping my symbols straight. So I'm not sure if that's what the question mark is, that we're seeing the, the back side of that. Oh, a little bit of a motor scooter, or a motorbike heading on. So Com Comix Trans from Slovakia, next to us there. bit of a local run for that that truck all right oh the lights down here on the pole next to me I don't know how I didn't see that but I didn't well, how I didn't see that is I, I don't know where to look for things Get ready to turn right. in Europe all the time because they're in they're, I was just talking about how things are different turn right. all right so, should be the last road, and we're going to LKW Walter. Looks like it's going to be here on the left. Get ready to turn left. So, kind of down here at the end. Turn left, and really? then keep left. I thought I was through. Well, that's not good. $130 or euros is not, not what Safe I wanted. Inside. I really thought I was fine with the yellow, but clearly I was not. All right, so we got to go way down there, but I can't pull past that, so I am going to have to turn around here in this space, I think. So I guess I could go either way, but I'm going to go this way and then loop around. So I'm not terribly worried that there's space because, again, as we started this episode, the turning radius on these trucks is great given how tight things are around. But we'll go ahead, get this where it needs to be and hopefully do it pretty quickly. Well, we'll see. I'm worried I'm a little too close to that trailer. But it's going to be a bit of a challenge. Some of these trailers turn. Some don't. Mm. Am I too close? Yeah, I'm too close. Mm. Let's see. Maybe we can scrape our way on by. Because, like, once I... Well, I don't know that I want to be doing that, because now he's just going to keep swinging. Oi. All right. I do have a little bit of clearance now, though, so... Let me do that. And then we'll position that there. Still kind of closer than we would like to be. It's going to give it to me. It's close enough to the door, so we'll take it. Well, it may not give it to me now. <laughs> I don't know how much room I have. Not much. Hmm. So this is going to take a little bit of effort here. Because, yeah, I don't have... Well, I have enough room that I can do some stuff, so... Let's see. Yeah, this should definitely be better. At least we're going to get most of the trailer lined up on the dock door there. So there we go. All right. So get our base reward. Get a good amount of experience since that was a little bit of a longer run. 854 experience. But 
you know, we're still not a lot of high ranks given that it's just a challenge to proceed here with the real economy. But thank you for tagging along from Verona to Maribor. Hope you've enjoyed this journey. If you do, I certainly appreciate if you drop a like. And also thank you very much for getting here to the end. And in addition, if you want to be reminded of or, or notified of things that are coming out on the channel, please subscribe and that way you'll easily be able to find things and you can mark that notify button as well to get notified about things being published. With that, I'll see you next time.